Okay, we are live on Facebook and live on Zoom. All right, everyone, welcome to the Wednesday, March 29th, uh, 2023 regular meeting of the Grass and School Committee. It is six o'clock and 36 seconds. We are going to call this meeting to order. Uh, I'll start with a roll call of committee members. Mr. Kearney. Present. Mr. Carr. Present. Ms. St. Ange. Present. Ms. McLeod. Present. Mr. Dial. Present. Uh, we are all here. Uh, so we have a quorum and the meeting has officially begun. Uh, with that, we'll start with the prep pledge of allegiance. With our new flag, which off, off camera, everyone is here. <laughs> we have a beautiful new flag. We do. So pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. So, um, <laughs> We have this uh, regular school committee meeting. We have an agenda. Uh, I would be remiss uh, if we did not start off with a recognition of terrible tragedy in Nashville. Yet another of uh, these just unthinkable events that's happened in our, in our country. Um, and I know I can speak for uh, our this committee, uh, our school community, and our overall community that our hearts definitely go out to those families and that community uh, with that tragedy. Um, and so. You know that is a that, that is unfortunately a more increasing fact of life that we uh, unfortunately need to uh, live with. But um, you know we are certainly thinking of them. Uh, in light of that, um, uh, we don't have anything on the agenda with respect to that. But uh, Vice Chairman Cohen did ask for a few moments of the floor to uh, to to have a couple remarks. So I'll turn it over to uh, Vice Chairman Cohen. I appreciate that, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you for making the remarks and, and recognizing uh, this is it. These things are, are some of the most severe tragedies I think you can imagine. Um, as I did last time, and it's sad to say, last time, um, I do want to, um, <clears throat> I do, it's really difficult, but I want to um, <clears throat> honor the victims by, you know, and also helping to drive home the gravity of the situation <clears throat> by, uh, by reading the names of the victims. Um, there were six, uh, Evelyn Dykehouse, who was nine years old, Mike Hill, who was 61 years old, he served as a custodian, William Kinney, who was nine years old, a student, Catherine Koontz, who was 60 years old, she was a staff member, she was the head of school. Cynthia Peake, who was 61 years old and served as a substitute teacher. And Haley Scruggs, who was a nine-year-old student. Um, that is the second time I've had to do that. And uh, it seems like the thousandth time we've had a uh, flag flying at half mask out, outside and uh, to, to, to recognize these just unimaginable tragedies and you know what's more unimaginable but is our reality is that it's clear that we won't get any meaningful guidance or support from state or federal leadership um, relative to these types of tragedies this phenomenon is this terrible phenomenon and i know that because this has happened many times before so what's going to happen is that this will be reported on in the days following this incident and eventually it will become a tragic and a horrible memory and essentially nothing will be done. So uh, I think it's time, it's beyond time. I'm, I've been complacent. This is something I'm very passionate about. I, I've been too complacent and uh, it's beyond time that as a, as, a, as a local community that we handle this at the local level um, by implementing uh, meaningful and substantive um, security measures in all our buildings. We um, we respond to 9/11 with immediately with more robust security measures, air marshals on planes, and we basically eradicated U.S. domestic hijackings overnight. We uh, during the war on terror and thereafter respond to higher terror threats in public places like you know museums and government buildings and sports stadiums by uh, increasing security presence and measures. And um, we respond to we respond to police brutality by you know establishing mass widespread activism that resulted in you know a complete overhaul of police training and recruitment 
procedures and protocols and has also resulted in um, effective civilian oversight and, and, and increased government oversight for police departments throughout the nation. And we have essentially done nothing when it comes to this. We debate about you know gun control and whether that's the cause of it or not. We've done nothing. And, and we have not applied that same practical approach to our schools. And to me, what that says about us as a society is that we value getting to Aruba safely, or uh, we value uh, being able to watch Tom Brady throw a football around in comfort more than we value the safety of our children and, and the people that teach them and keep them safe. And this is an unacceptable reality. So I'm calling upon this committee and the Coaxes Select Board to meet in an emergency executive session in the immediate future in order to discuss um, the implementation of effective and material and purposeful security measures in our schools. And I would like this to happen, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like this to be posted within the next few business days. This is an important issue. It is as important as anything that we're confronting right now. It's an emergency. And uh, this is our chance to get it right. And I think we've had far too many chances. And I thank everyone for that. I apologize. It's obviously a difficult topic. So thank you. Thank you, um, Vice Chairman Collin. Um, and thank you for your, your candid and, and heartfelt remarks. Um, security is a, is a huge issue. It's again not on the agenda, so I, I, I dare not to go too far into it now. But I know that I can tell you that this will be a commitment of this this committee, uh, and we will work with the select board and uh, reach out post haste to uh, see what we can get accomplished. Um, and no doubt, with your passion and leadership in this regard, as you've done in many other places, we will see things uh, move forward and do the right things for our children. So. Um, with that as our opening remarks, we will move into public comment. Um, this is an area of the agenda reserved for areas where people are comments of items that are not on the agenda. Uh, and so with that, I will, uh, if you have comments on something that is on the agenda, you can raise it now and then we will get to it uh, at the appropriate agenda item. But right now, uh, I'll open up the public comment. Any public comments from the audience are online. See any public comment from the audience? We are just looking. I'll just give it a moment, and I will see if there's any public comments coming in from uh, Zoom. Just a reminder that if you're watching on Facebook, you can't uh, comment on Facebook. Well, you can, but we won't see it <laughs> to help with the meeting. Yes. Uh, comment to the committee. Yes. So, uh, so I do great. not see any uh, public comments. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan. So with that, we'll close off um, public comment. We have an invited guest, uh, Ms. Mary Beth Reardon, to talk to us about a special opportunity for our field class students. Um, welcome, Ms. Uh, Reardon. Yes, I should mention Mary Beth is a science teacher uh, in high school. It's a wonderful job. Uh, mm -hmm. um, welcome, Mary Beth. Excited for this uh, field trip. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so I'm here to present um, a proposed idea to take the ninth grade Intro physics classes to Kennedy League Park. We've got in the past, um, our most recent culminating field trip was to Museum of Science, um, but we, we would like to bring back Kennedy. Um, one of the issues in the past, it's a great field trip, and I'll, I'll tell you why we like to do it, but um, the timing was tough because the park used to not open until 10. And last time we went was 2018, and we're still on that 210 dismissal. And so it's just, you felt like you spent more time on the bus than you actually got to be there. And so now I think parks open at nine and uh, we're done at 2.55. And so I think it will actually work out perfectly. But um, it's really nice to take the students to an amusement park and um, experience firsthand a lot of the concepts that we talked about all year. Like right now we're talking about um, energy and momentum and we talk about collisions and momentum being conserved and how something falls, potential energy converts to kinetic energy, but it's a lot more exciting for them to actually collide on bumper cars and go down a roller coaster and feel how many G-forces they're experiencing. And um, and even for people that don't like going on rides, there's plenty of physics just on the bus right there. Why is that on-ramp banked? What purpose does that have? Um, the bus lands on the brakes, why do we lurch forward? And so all these things they can 
articulate because we've been talking about them all year. Um, and it's also nice for them um, because they take the physics MCAS in June on the 6th and the 7th, so Tuesday, Wednesday, and we were eyeing June 8th as a nice, like, all right, we did that, and now let's go off. So, so um, as it's out of state, uh, it's something that I need to present to you and get your approval, but it's, um, I think, in, included in your materials is uh, some of the questions that we have the students fill out, and while we don't expect them to walk around with like their calculators and pencils in and crunch all the numbers there. Uh, we do have them gather data and then um, in the days we have following, we go through and, um, and and take their experience and turn it into actual, we use the data and, and figure out things like, how many Gs was that at the bottom of the roller coaster? So, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, any, well, I'll open the floor to the committee members. Uh, Mr. Kearney, any questions, comments? Uh, yeah, when, when is the event? Oh, so some of the logistics, we were um, thinking that Thursday, June 8th would be nice because Friday would be probably a, a busy traffic day. Um, we have to cross Boston twice. And the following week, we run into you now we're on track for that Friday, last day of school. Um, so that would be finals week. And so we don't want to pull kids out then um, and we wanted to have the MCAS in the rear view mirror. If students are absent for the MCAS, they have until June 14th to make it up. So missing the 8th shouldn't be a concern. Um, we're looking to take approximately 120 people, um, three buses and uh, tickets cost $29. The transportation, um, Ray isn't sure if the district can provide three buses, but um, I have a worst case scenario and a best case scenario in terms of if we have to go privately, the buses are 1100 each if, if Ray has drivers and can do it, it's um, under 300 bus. So it's, um, we'll, we'll work on that. So um, <laughs> can you just for the edification committee, how many years roughly have we done this trip? I was trying to figure that out. Um, we definitely went in 2017, 2018, 2019 was Museum of Science. Um, 2020 and 21 were COVID, COVID yeah. um, and then last year we did Museum of Science also. But this is that you have practice doing this particular trip. And, oh yeah, and even yeah. before I've been here since 2013. But yeah. Cocker Carlisle, we also went to Canada. Sure, we did in my previous district. Yeah, it's, it's just it's good from a security perspective just to know they've done this and they know mm -hmm. they know the map of the park yeah. and they you know they have a good system for it. So. Yeah. It's nice. It's very contained. It's very clean. There's only mm -hmm. one way in and out. And, it, and, I, and it's wonderful physics, but it also, also is a nice uh, social emotional trip for the students. In terms yeah. Of their uh, ability to you know, talk with each other, to get to know each other. It's, school should be fun, too. Yeah. I that. Yeah, and I, I also say I'm the son of Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and the second question would be oh, the, sec the, the second comment is just a comment. So uh, we had a student, student council meeting. One of the things they were asking for was trips. Nice. So it's nice to go back and say this. Great. Yeah, we did a, a number of class trips last year. Um, and um, it, I think that's another reason we wanted to try to bring back Canopy. I think freshmen are seeing what some of the other grades have done. Like, did we go to the museum? And what if we went to? So I think. Um, the museum was great and it was like, nice to fit it in in the day, but I think now that we have the time frame that we have, it's worth the longer bus ride to actually experience it. They've, they've all been, well, a lot of them have been to the Museum of Science a lot. Um, this is kind of just a cool end of year physics opportunity. Thank you. Mr. Carr? Uh, my dear colleague who as a human disorder, we'll ask about chaperones, so I'll take that one off his list for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, can you tell us how you'll chaperone? We will have a minimum of two chaperones per bus. Um, that's what we've done in the past. If we They give a chaperone ticket for every 10 tickets we buy, so I mean, we, could bring, um, we could bring up to 12. I think all the freshman teachers will invite them, the physics teachers, um, and then it's just a matter of um just getting coverage and who we could i mean 
the bus ride, I think, can be tough on some faculty members, but he could open it up to parent volunteers too. And so, but there would be at minimum six faculty more if you wanted more. But I think the two on each bus, it's um, someone in the front, someone in the back, two people checking people in and out is working. Are there any, if teachers go, do we have ramifications around subs or anything like that? Anything significant? We, we have in, in the past. We, okay. it's, it's enough time ahead that we can plan ahead accordingly. Okay. I, I don't think that's a, a major factor. Thank you. Is it all? Oh, sorry. Uh, is it, is the class that goes to just one grade level, multiple grade levels? Um, good question. So, all the ninth graders take intro physics and they all take that and pass afterwards. Yeah. And then we have a couple sophomores, a couple of people who have transferred in, they haven't satisfied their MCAS yeah. requirement. And um, given that it has academic value, we would invite anyone taking yeah. the class to come. Yeah. Um, but that only ups it by just there's a handful. Right. Yeah. So that and that kind of takes away the, the freshman teachers, so the freshmen are done. Yeah, so Eileen Norton, Ron Ford, they're gung ho, yeah. um, and they just teach freshmen, and so it's not going to affect coverage at all. Awesome. I think it sounds like a great trip, and like something really cool to look forward to is kids who are coming. It's, yeah. it's a big deal for the big kids. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vice Chair McCall. Just thank you so much, Mr. Ricky, for bringing us to the kids. I mean, it's an awesome experience, and I love the worksheet. So it's not just like a jump in, right? It's like a learning experience. It's not just interview really like but it's like it's really cool. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh I'll um I'll agree. I mean this 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 is great. I think a lot of times we talk about these trips and we emphasize that this is experiential learning. This is taking what you learn in the classroom and seeing it in real life and knowing that science is everywhere. I'm sure you get the question, how am I ever going to use this? How do I need to know forces and dynamics and friction? And actually showing look they're on a roller coaster you can understand how it works by looking at why it's at an angle. And giving real practical and in a fun area um, uh, guidance on on what this means to, to real life. So I think that's that's great and to to tie it to something that's fun and has the added advantage of, of helping build and strengthen the relationships among the among the kids uh, in, a, in a in a great form. I, I think this is fantastic. So um, it seems like you've got the transportation on the plan. We've got the um, chaperoning. They know the area. Uh, this is a familiar trip got the academics so I think this is this is great thank you for, for taking the initiative to do this for the kids oh. <laughs> um, so with that I think uh, we'll call for a vote to approve a trip to Canada Lake Park so second uh, this has, uh, Ms. Ange has seconded uh, all in favor aye. Aye. aye all opposed is Bash unanimously uh, Dr. Sullivan, please feel free to plan and implement the trip. Thank you very Great. much for uh, for doing this for our students. Thank you, Mr. Reed. It should be a very memorable Thank experience. You. Something to look back on. And please send invitations to school committee members. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show up at Magic Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we can't. It'd be, a, it'd be an open meeting. Now. <clears throat> so with that, with our invited guests concluded, we will now move on to school updates from our very own superintendent of schools, Dr. Patrick Sullivan. Wow, it's quite a build up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, my pleasure. Um, it's great when you start with the last slide. And you think, you know, but you saw a little preview in reverse and I was catching up. Oh, there it is. Um, first of all, I just want to start by, by thanking uh, Vice Chair McClellan for, for that, for his comments. Um, I think one of the reasons that uh, I think Cohasset Special and Cohasset School Group is special is that, that you genuinely care about doing things uh, to optimize uh, what's best for the kids, and in this case, what's best for the kids and the staff. Um, and I, I deeply appreciate that. And also just to state that I believe security and safety of the students and the staff is, is paramount. It's the most important thing we do. And um, I feel we We've made strides, but I, I feel very comfortable, and uh, and I, I was part of completely in doing everything we can to make sure that our schools are safe. So I, I love that passion, and I, I generally love that. So so thank you for that. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, I want to talk about some things that have happened in the district in the last couple of weeks um, that I'm very proud of, and, and 
this is a, a shows a lot of um, our staff being passionate and, and really trying to, to share uh, with the community some of the great work that their, their students and your children are doing. Uh, the first one is recycled parts, and it's nice to see this back. Uh, this is something led by Nina Berkowitz from our fine arts department, and of course, Stephanie Moriarty, all of our art teachers. Uh, and then it's, a, it's very much a community uh, invested event where folks uh, take uh, common objects around them and create art with it. Uh, and, and it's wonderful to see all of these on display. And, and that happened recently. And um, you can still see some of them, particularly the upper lobby. You can see some of the work there. It's, it's pretty special. But uh, I shared some of these in my newsletters and certain some of the other uh, leaders. But you can, you can get a sense for um, you know, the art that they put together. It just it shows incredible creativity. Um, and uh, it, it was very resourceful. So I was uh, very impressed this year with the, uh, the art that they put together. Here's one eighth grade, and this is kind of an award winner, but you can see using uh, soda cans and various uh, materials, they created kind of an aquatic scene. I thought that was just sort of special and, and, and a good capture of that event. So thank you, Ms. Bergwitz. Total, uh, total team effort with the art department as well. Speaking of something special, this is really a Cohasset staple. Uh, I'm not showing you the video, but if you go on our newsletter and click on it, you can actually see the video I took of this. Um, I think this was the Cupid Shuffle, but I could be wrong. This is Mr. Dykus, uh, who is himself an institution here in Cohasset. He does such incredible work with the students and the families. And uh, this is a uh, first grade. This is Mr. McPhillips' class. Uh, doing, I think it's, it's close class. yeah, doing the uh, the the Cupid Shuffle. And I recognize one of the uh, one of the members of Miss McPhillips' class from there. So. Oh, I'm sure you do. That's right. <laughs> so this this is a uh, a wonderful event where um, not only are they learning these dances well, by the way, but they're moving constantly for a whole uh, phys ed period plus when they're doing it. So it's great fitness. Uh, they're they're totally in in sync with it uh, and it's it's just a wonderful event and then of course he he gets the uh, families involved and gets them out there they're dancing and I, I did happen to see a couple school committee members maybe out there uh, you know shaking it so it was <laughs> it was nice to see um, great event and I, I can say firsthand that students who graduate look back at this as a, a really special event so thank you Mr. Dykus for your passion and thank you uh, families and students for your involvement in this. This this will certainly continue. Really nice to say. Mr. Dyke is clearly loves his job. It's something that like I recognize every single time I go mm -hmm. to that thing. It's amazing. It's a smile on his face. He, he is. Like, yeah. I told him I'm gonna book him for our 2030 graduation party. <laughs> what? <laughs> we're so <laughs> blessed to have him. That's for sure. Um, and this was, you can see uh, Vice Chair McClellan in the background there. Um, and this is a very exuberant uh, Dr. Scullin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Come, maybe just caught him at that moment. But again, you are at the State House here. This was the Metco Advocacy Day, which was a tremendous day. Um, I was unable to attend, but we were, we were well represented at that event with uh, Dr. Scullin's um, assistant principals, um, Dr. Salas, and um, this noise and uh, assistant principals week is coming up, by the way. That'll be next week. So just, mm -hmm. just open. I think it's next week. And of course, we have our own Elisa Gittins Carl, our METCO director, uh, Dr. Collins, and I mentioned um, Vice Chair McClellan there. And then I believe there is some uh, Hingham representation there as well. But it, it was a it was a from what I'm told, a wonderful event. And there you can see um, the representatives from the Metco districts and then our sort of local crew on the, um, the veranda there overlooking the city. Um, Chair, uh, Vice Chair McClellan, I don't know if you want to share any, any words on this. This is a great event. It was a really interesting event. I've never been part of something like this, and uh, I, I'll do it again. I um, So the purpose of this was to uh, get a large constituency together in order to advocate for uh, top level funding for the METCO program at large. And uh, it began with the speaking um, program and then um, and then broke up into uh, where you meet with your uh, actual two sets of representatives because 
Um, you don't really think about it, but when you're a Metco district, you have your Boston representatives mm -hmm. and you have your local representatives. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the, the photograph that you saw of us in the Senate chamber before, and this uh, and this photo uh, here of us on the balcony was taken with uh, and it's made possible by Senator Pat Patrick O'Connor, um, who has been a remarkable partner for us and who has a school system. Um, that's a um, that's a coveted. Uh, tour to get to the balcony of the state house. That was the first time I've been on there, um, and that uh, was pretty cool. But um, what I what I want to say uh, about the event is that um, we should consider uh, many of the Metco districts had um, at least a contingent of students yes, present, and actually. they were able to cheer on their district. Um, and also, it's a great learning and civic opportunity mm -hmm. for the civics opportunity for them because they're able to meet with the representatives and see how that goes. I mean, even for me, it was very edifying and enlightening. So I can imagine for kids to be enriching. But what to me would be the the, the, the most value in, in bringing the kids would be they have um, the speaking program was, uh, first of all, there was a superintendent. I, I wish I remembered what school district it was from, um, who, who told a very uh, a very moving story. It was a so very Needham, brave story. Needham, Needham superintendent. Mid Mid Needham. Uh, I was, I, Dr. G, I think his name, I don't, it's a long uh, name with a last name with the beginning with G. I won't go into the story, but it, it was very moving. And in addition to that, there was um, many Metco alumnus, uh, <laughs> alumni uh, there that, um, that, that had, had, you know, either they were state legislators or they had accomplished, um, you know, a, a great deal in their, in their careers and just showed what is possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really, I think, very empowering for the kids, especially there's a state representative from, uh, he's in the very middle of that picture of all of us in the stairs. He's got a beard, he's got a navy blue suit on. And uh, he is a senator from uh, Dorchester, I mean, excuse me, a representative from Dorchester. And um, he was a Metco student, he's a Metco parent. And I think it was really special for the kids to see him speak and, um, I, I, so I would like Cohasset to send a contingent of students yeah. there next year. Um, I will definitely be returning. It was really mm -hmm. um, it's great. It's the first so, event of its type, so it would be nice to bring students so they can learn from that. Was it the first one? Yes. Really? Okay. Because I thought it had happened before. about it happening in the past. Uh, yeah. Well, I maybe mean, since I've been. But well, then again, we had we, we had yeah, we had COVID. So. But at least it definitely I, talked I, about I, it. Like I, this I think recurring. that it happened. Um, I think so. So maybe you're right, Dr. Sullivan, yeah, since you've been, but, but, but either but way, it, it, it was, it was very, very, I, I wasn't prepared for how actually engaging it was. I was there to yes. certainly show support for a program that we believe in here in Cohasset, but it was actually really interesting. So don't want to belabor it, but I just, I did, I did want to say that because it, it was actually really special. Great idea. Um, and then we had a couple of wonderful, uh, events. We had our all town, uh, choral event and we had our all town, um, band event. This is the all town band event, which took place in the um, middle school and high school gymnasium. You can see there's our jazz band, jazz, jazz ensemble rather. They were wonderful. And um, Stephanie Moriarty, our uh, uh, department chair of um, arts, fine arts and music, six through 12, did a fabulous job of navigating it, as did all the staff um, to work with her and the staff also mm -hmm. at Deer Hill. And also, yes. so. A dear help that went through for a long. I, so. I do appreciate the sports. Um, the sports medley. Yeah, I yeah, said the same. Medley. I called her. I called her and told her that. Yeah, great yeah. from the Bruins and the Celtics. Yeah, to their, their uniforms yeah. on. They, 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 they were wearing um, yeah, uh, sports, sports yeah. team garb. Yeah, uh, their, uh, I thought that was the highlight of the show. That was really nice. Also, I, I, Dr. Sullivan, who's the French teacher who accompanies the chorus? So that is Miss um, Scott. It's very Jennifer Scott. Too. She's very, very impressive, nice very, very impressive teacher and, a, and, a, and an excellent <laughs> company. Yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, there is um, Mr. Duall leading um, the elementary part of that, but it was a wonderful event. And then I mentioned the uh, the choral uh, portion of it, and that happened at Deer Hill, and uh, that was also uh, wonderful. This is one of the middle school groups. I paid great. And you can see <laughs> Mr. DeWall and I can't remember who the deer was. Oh, uh, let's go. I can't but anyway, they, they dressed the uh, degree people coming in as the, the skipper and the deer. And then um, you can see more of the, of the, uh, the 
choral event in the, on the right there. Uh, we did, I did highlight this in my uh, newsletter. This is, I think it's called the John T. Stalker Institute. Um, we had some Mediterranean, uh, well, we had some chefs there teaching our staff how to cook uh, fabulous Mediterranean meals. And I'm, what I'm told, it was fabulous and has already gone and been incorporated into the menu. So oh. it's upcoming. Here you can see some of the foods, very fresh, very uh Real great progress on that. Love that. Look at all those colors. Yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. And I think you had a picture too. I saw the eggplant getting cooked on the grill. I did. I didn't share it in this. It's in my newsletter. You have to go to my newsletter to see that. Directly on the grill. Directly on the I yeah. think that looked like a long time. Yes. Yeah, I know. It was good. I never do with the eggplant though. I did. Now you can. But that's uh, very unique and fresh options there. Um, we're also in, we're beginning, kind of in some cases, really into our transitions. We have a lot of transitions here. We have a PK to two transition to, to grade three. We have a grade five to grade six transition, our grade eight to grade nine transition. And then, of course, we have our college students, our students, many of whom are going to college uh, and university. And uh, we had two, two of those uh, events happen um, most recently. We had an informational college night. Uh, we also had a curricular night um, at here, right, right here for um, a couple of weeks ago um, for incoming eighth grade, ninth grade students. But this is a college night, and you can see Assumption, BU, UConn, UNH participated. And then um, in the same space, our guidance counselors uh, from the high school spoke to our eighth grade. It's wonderful. Um, Couple of big events coming up from two very important groups. First, we have our basketball showdown, and this is um, against the Wizards, um, the Harlem Wizards, I believe, and it is on April fourth at six thirty p.m. Um, almost sold out. So Tickets hot, are hot sold, tip. Out. sold out. Sold out. But if you volunteer, is it sold out? It's sold out. But if you volunteer through the PSO sign up genius, you can get it. Well, they so are, volunteer. Seats aren't guaranteed, but admission is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that we're very excited about that. We have our our own um, food service doing the concessions, and it With should gluten free be, options. That's right. You've spoken as a gluten free person. I'm very excited. <laughs> it should be a wonderful event. And then um, the the CEF. Um, so that's a great one. And the CEF is doing their, I, I love that it's the 14th annual yeah. uh, Deer Hill Spelling Bee. I love Dare to be great. And you can see the events. They misspelled be great though. Uh, yeah. so. I think that was intentional. I can't yeah. dial, I'm just guessing. Um, the buzz is that was intentional. Um, but we have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, May 15th, May 16th, and May 17th in the Deer Hill cafeteria. That's always a fun event. I usually play a part in that. And hope I spell the word correctly. Well, I'm hoping the teachers win. Well, no. Oh, against the Wizards? Oh, you mean, yeah. Not I the spelling. Uh, and, and it's they, so much fun, though, both. when they, the teacher, because <laughs> I, I got to play a couple times. We won one year, and uh -huh. all the kids went down, and it was, it was just such a great event. Yeah, yeah. That good energy. Really good. This, yeah. Should, this should be special. I think the odds of us winning this one are pretty low, but I, you never know, right? <laughs> It's an all-star team out there. I wouldn't uh, understand yeah. that. And then third graders have MCAS the next day. So that that's right. That's right. That's coming up. Um, we also have uh, the readathon that's sponsored by the PSO, and we have um, all. And this is at uh, Osgood. All of our doors are decorated wonderfully, and uh, we had um, just like a character day uh, where we have students dressing as their favorite character. That was awesome. Um, lovely event. And thank you to the TSO for their involvement in that as well. Well, you guys here on the committee? Yep. You should do that. Yeah, sure. your favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a CEF grant that I, I, you know, wanted to make sure I noted. Thank you, CEF. But the bikes came in to, this is Mr. Um, Humans, right? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Humans. This is a, a teacher at Deer Hill. And he put in a grant for uh, bikes. This oh, will help. Okay. Be, uh, I can't remember how many there are, like 30 or so. It's a whole class oh, that. And they have, they're going to be able to do bike safety. They're going to be able to do enrichment with these and really use our campus that, so, between Deer Hill and Osgood. It's just a great, great round. You shut that off, no one can go up there. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is. It's really, really great. And, and these, uh, and I promise an invitation when we get those rolling. So yeah, see please. These. Yeah. Dress is your favorite book character. Yeah. <laughs> on that, yeah, right. Um, 
you did mention MCAS testing. This is our MCAS schedule, just so everyone has a has a look at it. But that's upcoming, and we're we're prepared and ready for that. Um, and this was a couple. This was last week, but we have a walkthrough on Friday for the finished product uh, of the term. So that's very exciting. It, it looks beautiful, and um, a lot of work went into that. Thank you. Uh, Susan, for your, your well, persistence and efforts, and yeah, right. Tundi and all the yeah. support from the committee, and we're going to be very uh, and all the patients on behalf of the yeah. the staff and the, the coaches and the students and the parents and families, the town, and the, town yeah. the town for supporting us as well. It's going to be a, a lovely uh, lovely field and a safe field, which is nice. Dr. Sullivan, I think you should. You should open it officially with a uh, ceremonial <laughs> kick return. <laughs> I was going to have maybe Paul, you can kick like a 50 yard field goal. Oh, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so now it's new field houses up, tracks fresh, fields fresh, and the lights are fresh. Press box. Fresh box. Press, Press box. box. Yes. 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 So we get the way on the scoreboard. We end the scoreboard, hopefully. We'll hopefully. have some uh, yeah. 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 building. Yeah. Details. So there we go. So. Oh. Very positive, uh, very positive improvements in the track team. And speaking of positive improvements, um, I'm excited to announce that Rock Roberts um, has accepted the newly created position, which I advocated for here, of Director of Data Curriculum Evaluation. Rock is currently the Director of the uh, Reading in English PK-12 in Braintree, and comes to us with over 25 years of experience as a teacher and educational leader two amazing finalists and I want to thank both of them for their uh, interest and uh, congratulations to Rock. He's also in a doctoral program at the University of South Carolina regarding educational practice and innovation with a concentration in educational systems improvement. Um, it'll be a wonderful addition to staff and he starts on the 1st of July and uh, shortly thereafter I'll have him here so you can get a chance to, to meet Rock. So we're excited about that. And speaking of excited, happy to announce that we finalized contracts with um, Susan and Barbara to bring them back through the end of June 2026, at least. So they were Thank you. So, very excited with that. And that's just a, a quick update that I thought um, would kind of you know, give you a sense for where we are right now. Great. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much. Dr. Patrick Sullivan, we'll move on to our um, regularly scheduled agenda, uh, which goes right back, back to Dr. you, Patrick Dr. Patrick Sullivan. Sure that which one is it now? Uh, this is after school after activity. School activity. Okay. Like, um, good, good. 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 Your, your advocacy and passion in action. Uh, My pleasure. And I share, um, uh, I share Mr. Kearney's passion in this. It's, you know, to try to make sure that we have active uh, schools before and after school that, that extend that learning experience socially, emotionally, educationally, uh, really important. It also helps the engagement with families. This is, it's important that we continue to grow these. Uh, I, I think we, I hope this list shows some growth and then you can see that, but I also, I, we also recognize room for more growth and we very much uh, appreciate any input that you may have here. I did send uh, an additional document to you that shows the content of the enrichment courses. Yeah. yeah. Because they're really nice. And I can actually review those as well. Okay, but this is just by the numbers um, the high school, the middle school, Deer Hill, and, and Osgood, um, what we have for our students. Obviously, there's more at the high school because of the, uh, the four grades and then sort of the uh, the, the sort of the uh, comprehensive nature of the clubs and sports, but um, you can see that. Um, but you can see it growing, and you can see some diversity happening, and at, at all levels. As I kind of scroll down here, um, very high percentage of students involved in sports, as as you know, at the high school. Uh, high school just continues down here because of sports. Uh, it is 19. Yeah, 18. Oh, it is? Okay. The number is 19. Yeah. yeah. I think that is a huge growth. Yes, it is. Yeah. That used to be uh, shared with Hull. Correct. Hull's Cohasset. 
and I think they're ready for a junior varsity team. So. Yeah, I did. Uh, that would have been an interesting statistic. I didn't think to do that to yeah. show the growth in sports, yeah. but oh, that's huge. That, that program is, uh, but, but that has certainly mm -hmm. grown. Um, and then these are activities that be exclusively outside of school hours. You can see them. I mean, it's funny because like seeing some of these things too. It's like um, fifty-seven of them track. So mm -hmm. that's that's a lot of kids getting exercises with these yeah. boys and girls. That's a giant team, and we're very uh, hopeful of uh, that team's success potential moving forward. We should do really well this year. But you can see this. I mean, there's some really diverse. This we're at the high school right now, but. You know, art magazine, um, entrepreneur club, that's a new club right now. That's an unpaid club. That'll be something that you know, we'll be looking to attach to a statement, I'm sure, down the road. Uh, investment club, which is uh, these two clubs sort of met that need of more financial literacy, too. Uh, and I, I, along with the Credit for Life Fair that you uh, saw um, highlighted recently. Uh, what does it mean, unpaid? It's somewhat ironic so, the investment club is unpaid. Yeah. Uh, so in our contract, uh, and this is something that obviously anything in a contract is agreed upon by the, the, uh, the CTA, and if, it's, if it's the CTA's contract and the uh, school committee, one of the um, areas is stipends. And it does stipulate that, a, that the first year uh, a club is put into place, it's typically not paid because you're trying to gather support. It could be, it could be something that um, I deem necessary to pay, but these are all new clubs. So this means that we are not paying the staff who are- That's exactly what it means. So this means that the staff has, is, is volunteering. Has stepped up and has decided yes. to take a, 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 a chance at a club, so which I very much- appreciate. Special thanks from the committee to all the staff who, uh, who are working with our kids mm -hmm. uh, and on that basis. Yeah, it's a big deal. That's Some great- Not just the time medical here, club, I guess, time. Mr. Savage and uh, Spinnaker newspapers, a lot of great things happening. And then you know, we have some, some activities that are happening formally with CCR. Uh, and this is sort of a total enrollment here at the high school. There is certain kind of formula or test period of like, okay, we're going to start a club and run it as unpaid. And then if it yeah. has enough momentum, then we offer a yes. How does that transition work? Um, so I have Maybe to, I, I, well, I just have to consult the contract to make sure I get the, I get that okay. correctly, but there is but a there formula. there is something in the contract. And yes, absolutely. And it's, it's a particular amount of time. Yep. Um, I just wouldn't want to mistake. Oh, no, no, no. And I, I don't need you to yeah. try to quote yeah. anything. I'm just yeah. asking if there's something. So um, I'll share another document just so you, you can see it. Uh, and I, I won't go very quickly with this, but just so you have it. Um, these are enrichment programs. Okay, and this just gives a sampling. Again, I do this whole stuff at the beginning. But um, we do have a fall, winter, and spring program at middle school, and we have we had uh, fall and um, um, winter at the elementary schools. And you can see them. They're, they're just to look at the, the list of them beast mode, fitness. Games and Comics and Music United, Public Speaking, this is at the middle school, Lego Robotics, uh, CMS Singers, uh, Maker and Aerospace Club, that's in our, our STEM room, STEM lab. If I keep going, um, now that was the winter, so this is the foot, uh, kind of out of um, out of order, but you can see there's some similarities to the, what we offered, but then there'll be some new ones. Um, and then the Deer Hill Enrichment. So you can see how that grew from the fall to winter. I just had them switch. The Deer Hill program. Um, again, summer before, summer after school. Uh, board games, cartooning club, uh, creative design with tech tools, cross stitching, uh, traditional hook and eye rugs. I love that because of the, you know, the sort of vocational um, home ec. Uh, Angle, dance, Lego creation challenge, and those are more uh, design, math, math art. Then at Osgood, 
some of them. Yeah, it's a very similar format. Yoga. And these are our littlest kids doing yoga and mindfulness. I just love that. Um, our club, again, more dance, uh, STEAM science, uh, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. That was a big uh, draw. And uh, you can see the dates that it happened. Um, that, that this is, you know, at, we're, still in, we're still in the midst of it. Uh, this is what's offered right now, currently, what the kids are taking. You got, some, you got some similarities, but you just come additions like jewelry making, the French club, which is nice, xylophone, print making, blood of dance at Miss Carava, which is great. Um, you have the steam again. So, anyway, I just wanted to show you that, uh, and just you know, let you know that we're working on it and it's becoming more comprehensive and more diverse. And uh, and I want to thank the staff for that, and of course the leaders at each uh, building, and the families for investing in it. You know what and, else is cool? Sorry, that's good. Like some of the older high school kids are offering things during similar times and after school and before school, yeah. and it's part of their volunteer service. Absolutely. But I just love that it's kids teaching kids. Like that's great. Hannah from the high school is doing French at Deer Hill, yes. and I think like what's cooler than having you know not only are you looking up to these kids and watching plays and at art shows and in sports, but now they're there teaching you French that they learned here at high school. I'm just saying it's cool to integrate that. I completely agree with you. And I think we're, we're I think we have an update uh, spotlight coming up on high school internships, which will be uh, I think really good for you to see too. That's, that's right. It's just so nice. It's really nice because you, I don't know who's getting more out of it. I don't know, probably me just feeling like <laughs> so, I, so I just thought that by opening up our discussion, right? Uh, any uh, comments, questions for Shavit? I'll just uh, open the floor. Uh, I just like to expand on my feelings. <laughs> um, Don't it's cry. Just, it's, I will try not to. Uh, I just really appreciate the time that the teachers are taking, and I know some of these are stipended and everything, mm -hmm. but um, you know, I think just to acknowledge that, of course, there's the actual time of the class, the enrichment, but then prepping and getting materials and also sharing skills outside of the typical academic day. And for some kids, you know, going to hook an eye rug or dance or French, that's gonna be the best half hour of their day because school is hard or whatever is going on is going on. And that's something that they have this shared connection and then they learn about their teacher more as a human and they have this common interest. And I just think it really adds so much to, to the day. It's also really nice, especially at the elementary level, to have an element of choice, which usually you don't get to experience until middle high school or college. Um, so to be able to choose something about what you feel strongly is a really important addition to our academic program. Thank you. Thanks for making that point to say, Anj. I think it's a really good one. One of those activities on that list changed my life. So I mean, which one was that? Whether it was for the, for the better or for the worse, but uh, you know, maybe I would have been an astronaut. I don't know if I had. Uh, was it today? Got involved. Bottle you in and found a. Uh, and yeah. found a, a you you got to tell us what it is. Yeah. A, uh, <laughs> an interest in, in advocacy and service, but uh, yeah. So I, I completely agree with that. That's a really good, nice point to make. About and then, that. of course, there's the time yeah. outside of that that they're planning. So it is, you know, it's it's a big investment of, of time and effort and energy, but it makes a huge difference in in kids' lives. And thank God you had model you on so you can sit at these beautiful skirted tables. That's now. right. But those teachers. I mean, it, it was, I mean, it's, you know, obviously, Molly Yuen was the, was the sort of vehicle, but the teacher is what changed my, what made the difference, right? And, and you have to recognize it. I think it's a great, great point that you brought up. So, and, and it's a lot of times, as we saw, as Mr. Dial pointed out, unpaid, right, on their own time doing this because they are dedicated to what they do and want to make sure the kids have the best experience possible. So, I also, um, I also, I want to say that not only does this help kids because it's like they need to do something. Um, safe harbor has been a blessing to mm -hmm. my children. As a matter of fact, it says 32, there's 49 now. Yes, so right. It started with seven, and it's just evolved into something. Yeah, yeah. those awesome. ambassadors have been wonderful, and it's a very popular. Yeah, yeah. it's thing um, the, the you know, as you guys know, I serve on the wellness committee, and um, I also to the student council committee yesterday you know these 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 things come up all the time and um it's so nice that we have so many programs 
it's just that I, I'd like to see us try to uh, advertise it a little bit better mm -hmm. with, the, with the website, um, more, more of descriptions than like, so like, I think people can navigate kids kind of, and teachers do a really good mm -hmm. job. Uh, you know, my son's like, yeah, the coach is trying to get me to play wrestling. He's asking me if he's trying to get him to do something over the yeah. winter. And, um, you know, fortunately for us, Jack didn't have a sport. Mm -hmm. He kept him in church in Safe Harbor. But if we didn't have that, I don't know what we would have done, to be honest. And some kids aren't going to make the team. So what, where do they turn to, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that as a parent, or especially somebody that moves into the district where is thinking about yes. transit, which we have a lot in Cohasset, can go and go to the website and look through with their child what appeals to them. So I think if we could dial down on the uh, more of a um, specific description of what everything is. I love that. I was also thinking that um, at our orientation nights for, and I, we do this a bit, but we can do more uh, description about some of these activities, particularly as we're building our enrichment program to be pretty, it's pretty robust, you know, right. particularly wow. for a smaller district. We're offering a great diversity. It's really nice for families to know that. Right. And also that they have, they have an opportunity to, um, it's, it's not just um, the staff who can teach these courses. It's also some the families can teach it. If there's expertise out there, you know, we can move into that as well. But we do have a, uh, we do have a, a, a wonderful offering, I think, now that we need to advertise as much as we can. Right. And some of the other things came up, like we do have, like, um, we have an open fitness center. We do a grand opening. So we have tables listed there mm -hmm. for each specific, like, gotcha. kind of like the college when you come in, sign up over here, sign up over here. You got to do something. Those sign stipends up. are coming very shortly. Yeah. We okay. just we just get over that hurdle. Um, we're ready to post. I think that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, Thank you, Dr. Sullivan, for that, uh, that update. I think um, our next agenda item is academic business. I understand Dr. Scollins is not, uh, is not here, yes. um, but um, we have a brief uh, summary update about what's to come, and I think a notification on it. <coughs> Fair? We do. Let me just make sure I can find it. So just for the committee's point of view, um, Dr. Scollins will be doing a deeper dive. We, we talked about this on... Um, literacy initiatives on some of the uh, effectiveness of some of the changes that we recently made. Um, but we wanted to use this as a, as a placeholder to uh, give kind of a preview. Yeah, and I, and I don't know that I need to share this on screen, but you can see this is just a, um, I will say that I, I think it would be fair to have Dr. Scollins uh, elaborate a bit more on these when she, when she comes back. Uh, and actually we're prepared to do a, a more robust um, update on this, but I want to keep everyone informed of sort of our timeline. In front of you, you have a timeline that, that shows the, um, you don't have it? Oh, okay, well then, then bear with me. I will, I will try to share it then. Um, in the interim, may I make an inquiry? Absolutely. I got it right here. Do you anticipate Dr. Scollins presenting a more robust update at the next school station. That's the plan. Okay, so that's good. So that's that's actually this works well because then people will know that it's coming up. Yeah, I think people want to participate in that. And that was a good filibuster because I did finally figure out how to share it on my screen. So here we here we have it. Um, this is uh, this is just an it's not just this is an outline of what we've done over the last few years uh, in terms of uh, literacy and what our approach has been. And again, we can talk more specifically and maybe take some more um, more specific questions about the direction mm -hmm. we're moving at the next meeting. <laughs> but uh, can you see that okay? I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Can you zoom it a little? I yes. hope so. If not, it's fine. It's just small. Uh, you just like your speed. Yeah. No. no, never mind. Sorry. It's fine. Uh, might be the best we can get over now. I, can, I guess I have to exit. Uh, That's, you're fine. Um, anyway, 2019-20, we did uh, begin to implement uh, more of our Wilson's Foundation <laughs> Phonics program in grades K-3. We had the basic training for all, for all of our staff. Again, that's a, a huge part of, that's, a, that's our phonics program for 
um, the the uh, the elementary level. Um, we began really a, a more intensive uh, MCAS analysis process than we've had in the past in 2019-20. Then we hit, and that was during COVID, and then the hybrid year, um, we did a uh, informal review of where we were with the Teaching and Learning Alliance, who's come in and really has run the workshop all the way with all of our students. We implemented the use of Lexi, a personalized reading program for students in kindergarten through grade five, which provides um, really good information for students and for uh, families on reading. And this is an area where um, Ms. Sinan, feel free to jump in and help me as, I, as I describe some of these. Um, but that is that's been very uh, helpful in targeting uh, reading choices that students can make and making sure that we push them uh, within the zone of where they are to to further their reading development. Uh, we started with a, a mini institute of professional development in 2021-22 uh, in October, uh, and that was great for our staff, uh, particularly three to five. The creation of the Elementary Instructional Literacy Team, the ILT, which involved teachers and reading specialists and uh, principals, and that was uh, facilitated by TLA, our Teaching Learning Alliance. We offered more opportunities, continue to offer opportunities for staff in the Wilson Reading Program. Again, a note on all this is the idea is that that word comprehensive is very important. We're approaching literacy from many angles, um, you know, uh, that, that I think tie into the science of reading and also the, the, the literature of that and tie into uh, motivational aspect of it as well. So there is a motivational aspect. Um, you can, see, you can see this, but a lot of the work we did with our reading specialists with TLA, um, like coaching them, um, determining resources for what we were going to do with um, phonics, which was foundations, but also phonemic awareness. We introduced integrity, which has been a great program. It's uh, been very welcomed by staff and something that is really helping. And we're seeing data growth that we're going to be able to show. Which is Wonderful. Go ahead. And that is especially nice because there is so much we're asking our teachers to fit That's in during right. a day. And a Hagerty lesson is 10 minutes. Yeah. Which, when we're asking people to work within the parameters of a school yeah. day, um, 10 minutes feels doable. Right? Absolutely. Like it's doable. It's a nice little bite sized bit. And it has a really big impact in that in that short chunk of time. It sure does. And I've seen that in, in practice in many, many classrooms, yep. is just in walking through, not in any particular order, just mm -hmm. randomly, I see it. Yeah. Um, again, we've continued to use Lexia, and we implemented iReady Reading mm -hmm. Diagnostics, which gives us a really good data source uh, mm -hmm. to track uh, student um, growth in this, in this particular case in uh, reading. And we do that three times a year. We do dibbles again three times a year. Um, and then uh, we're really looking at we do evaluate and made recommendations for ELA benchmark benchmark assessment schedule plus the next time. Yeah. Full it's mode there. Yeah, the math. Um 2022-23, uh, we implemented phase one. Uh, full implementation of readers workshop in grades three to five and early adopters for grade K to two. As is true with most things we do in class, it the early adopters were pretty much every teacher, um, and that is wonderful. It's going to give them a definite um, help as they move forward with it, and it's going to help uh, all the way up to to fifth grade. Um, so this just gives you an idea. We did bring um, staff to Manomet Elementary. <laughs> Manomet has been doing uh, readers workshop for um, a long time, and they've developed a really strong expertise, particularly. At uh, uh, a few staff that um, we really centered our staff to see them in action. And it was some good, uh, from what I'm told, it was, it was very um, collegially uh, growing experience. It was nice to sort of see what they're doing and to sort of mirror some ideas around that. And then 2023-24, um, you know, moving forward, we're really looking at uh, phase two of this and then continuing our partnership with TLA to improve readers workshop, continuing to grow and offering our phonics program and uh, Wilson reading program and then our foundations phonics program. I think I said foundations was our phonics program. I hope I didn't 
episodes. Uh, year two of implementation of Hegarty, phonemic awareness, and then uh, continue our multi-syllable and morphology work, grade four to five. And of course, as we add new staff, and we will have a few more ones coming in, make sure they're up to date. A couple of things that are happening uh, in the state that you should be aware of is that there is a bill um, and you can see it's presented by uh, Sal Di DeMonico, Di Dominico, uh, an act to promote high quality, comprehensive literacy instruction in all Massachusetts schools. Now, just read this. It says literacy has been a focus in the state for many years. This bill is acting is asking for a Department of Elementary and Secondary Education literacy strategic plan and for districts to create an aligned literacy strategic plan focusing on a comprehensive approach to literacy. We've already implemented many of the components of the proposed bill and will adjust as needed if and when this bill is approved. Um, however, I do take a bit of umbrage to some of the things in, in the bill because I do feel that you know districts should have the right working with communities to determine the best approach uh, for for their for their, their children and for their students. Um, the prescription here isn't necessarily a, a, a good one. Um, you know, always open to hear ideas from community members and to, to look at data and, uh, and have those discussions. But I bring that to your attention because I, I don't know which direction that bill is going to spin. And I, I, I want to be transparent with that when, when, when the time is appropriate to be transparent with that. It's just a bill, it's just in kind of its infancy now, I understand. So I don't, I don't know. I think the work surrounding that is something we really need to keep our eye on yeah. and also as consumers of the information really be aware of uh, the language and the tone that's being presented mm -hmm. in my professional capacity we were looking at the mass literacy guide for families and communities mm -hmm. and um i just felt like it's a little bit it was alarming how it was presented and perhaps puts people in a position that feels like things aren't being done when in fact, and perhaps there are places where they're not. Mm -hmm. But I think that we have been proactive with everything <laughs> perfect here. No, are we working on it? Yes, and, and reflecting and trying to make changes accordingly. Mm -hmm. But I think going through that mass literacy guide for families and communities, I went through each kind of row of the matrix and felt like, great. Foundations, Hegarty, yes. Readers Workshop, we are hitting the mark. And if you added another column and said, what, what program are you using to help do this? We we are doing something for each category. Right. Does that mean every child is having 100% success? No, and we need to make sure that that's happening. But as a district, I feel like we've made some great additions to our, our academic program in the past few years that we're ahead of that. That's really great to hear. Um, and just so everyone knows, this is a link. I won't I won't click on it necessarily, but if you go to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education website and you look at the Mass Literacy Guide for Families and Communities, and I encourage you to do so, um, you can see what the state. This is a this is kind of the bill is a different. Thing, but this is a, a guide what the state is looking for districts to do, and what uh, Miss Saint Ange just described is put into verbiage here. Um, about what we have done. And we've talked about you know, creating a comprehensive literacy approach, uh, Hegarty phonemic awareness, foundations for phonics, uh, systematic instruction with those programs, along with the use of decodable readers, our iReady reading diagnostics and Dibble's assessments. Um, we've invested a lot in professional development. We've built up libraries. Um, we're committed to building up teacher texts and libraries. We have a very articulated curriculum review cycle. We have read aloud books with language rich text. That's an important phrase. As well as we have the opportunity to read books for their choosing that are appropriate for their just right level. And you saw that demonstrated um, at the spotlight last meeting, how students would take their just right books. You saw um, her handing them the books. And then uh, we follow the frameworks and our ELA for ELA and our teachers show and model the expectation, teacher and students proactive together, and then students apply their learning skills in both their reading and writing. So I, we, you. So that is a, a high level overview that we can get into more extensively later, but I wanted to 
to keep with the what we would say yes. we were going to do and well, give that update. I wanted to, and, and thank you for that, Dr. Sullivan. And the reason I wanted to uh, maintain this on the agenda for this meeting and the Dr. Sullivan to be here, not only to preview for both the community and the committee what we'll be talking about next time, because this is the core offering of our of our schools. The core mission is incredibly important. But also to note that there is some political machinations going on there. Um, Dr. Sullivan, you mentioned some concerns. We don't know whether this is have you reached out to our representation uh, and uh, received any feedback from them? And is there anything this committee can do to help you in that regard? They're aware of it. We have reached out uh, more Dr. Scollins than I, but um, we also have uh, Dr. Scollins and I have put our signature on a response along with many other uh, Lexington and Union, many Duxbury and many other schools. Uh, in the area who um, believe that the bill that is out there is misrepresenting uh, the actions of many of the districts in trying to be comprehensive. Um, I don't know what support we need yet. And I also want to be very transparent with what's happening so that I get feedback. From the community. We give feedback to the community to, to ensure that everyone understands the, the direction we're rolling, which truly is to be comprehensive of this approach. I'm not my author in any way. If, it, if at that point it becomes uh, helpful for the committee as a whole, so to speak, we can discuss whether or not we have a committee view. And if we do, I'm sure we would be happy to support uh, yes. the administration and make sure that you have the tools available with the freedom necessary to provide the education that you were giving our, our students. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I would absolutely lean to Dr. Scotland's to, to guide you a little more. Yep. Um, thoroughly on some of the ins and outs of it. But I, I encourage um, all, all both committee members and anyone who's um, participating at home to take a look at this um, legislation and, and, and form an opinion of it. And please uh, let your elected officials not only directly and, and Beacon Hill, but also here on this committee uh, under, know if you have views or concerns, because that is literally our job. To, uh, to to help out in that situation. So thank you for that. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I'm not going to necessarily open the floor to uh, discussion there, since we're going to have a more detailed discussion next time. And I know we have a, a what will probably be a, a more detailed executive session at the end of the meeting uh, for a couple of matters. So I do want to keep moving. Um, which brings us to uh, budget resources and governance section F on the agenda. And we have an item up for a vote on preschool fees. This has been presented to the committee. In a couple iterations, so I think we're familiar with the with the backgrounds. Um, uh, I think uh, Dr. Sullivan, I'll turn it over to you. I don't know if you want to let Ms. Ms. Owen lead or if you have a, a view. Uh, but if we can focus, if, if anything's changed, I'll take it as read that the uh, committee knows the the, the facts. From yes. The prior um prior presentations. Yes. No. Thank you. Um, I will let Ms. Owen lead this. Um, just know that I I do I do support it, although I understand the uh, the thought of trying to keep the fees as neutral to business as possible, um, but I will let Ms. Owen um, uh, lead us through this. And, and the information has not changed, as I understand. So, Ms. Owen, uh, thank you very much for putting for, for this. If you could focus the committee on a reminder of what your recommendation is, uh, because we are bringing this to the vote at this time. Certainly. So, just the increase um, that we're recommending, and we've talked about it at some point level, would be increase in the tuition from $2,800. Uh, per school year to the $3,200 per student for school year, um, which would almost cover one whole classroom, um, leaving the, the school um, district to cover the additional. Like right, right now, um, we're covering about $117,000 versus we're bringing about $44,000 in revenue. This would um, bring about $100,000 in revenue um, for the cost of the program with the extra classroom fee. Or 262. So, our recommendation would be um, moving from 2800 to 3200 just based on what the um, surrounding districts and private preschools are offering. Great. Thank you, Ms. Owen. And this was, this was brought to the subcommittee. So, um, Mr. Kenny, I believe you are a budget resource subcommittee member as well. And Mr. Carr, do um, you have any um, comments for consideration at the whole committee level? We concur in your two minutes. Thanks. All right. Um, I'll open up the floor for the committee. Um, any questions, concerns uh, for committee members? Uh, I'll start with Mr. Kearney, although as a subcommittee member, you may have new concerns, but you might have remarks. Yeah, I, thank you. Um, I do, 
I do wish it was free. I'll tell you that. Something that you know, other, other states do offer. Florida offers free PK. Um, Massachusetts is uh, not there yet. Um, and I, you know, I'd love to see legislation to help pay for that. Um, that said, um, hopefully the next year they'll be able to get through kindergarten, something that we've been working on really diligently in the last couple of years to try to make that happen. So we do see an increase that year, but I'm hoping to show you a big $3,200 savings the next year for each other. So this is something that we take very seriously and asking folks because we, we do recognize the high cost of living in classic. So to get hit with another $3,000 is, 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 is tough for families, especially in this work environment in this town. Um, so this was really carefully thought about, and I appreciate my colleagues for working hard on this. And, you know, I'd just like to say that I fully support what we're doing. I still would like to see, see the state come up and take care of the cost. Because pre-K pre -K, uh, is so important. You know, and I give this 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 district a lot of credit for their amazing work in pre-kindergarten because my children went through this and um, they excelled really well through all the programs that we have in place in the um, in their early necessary years to learn how to read and write. I'm really proud of this. Thank you, Mr. Kearney. Mr. Carr, any comments, questions? Sound? Um, I just think this seems like a very reasonable increase. It's still significantly less than private preschool and literally falls in the middle of the surrounding towns. So it feels well thought out, balanced. Like, I mean, I wish it were all three, right? Mr. Kearney, but like, it's not. But it's a lot less expensive than a private preschool. So it feels as fair as it can be. Vice Chair McClellan. Uh, so my question is for the subcommittee members for Ms. Owen. Would we would we not consider expanding the program if we didn't raise the tuition? Like right now we have one pre-K room and we're we're gonna expand that to two, right? Yes. Would we not consider doing that if we stayed with the 2800? Are we only concerned doing that because of the contemplated revenue increase? No, no, no. And it's right. running at a loss to get either either one classroom. This actually brings more kids to the program, which is great. Um, to your point, Greg. Um, but that it, would happen either way. It would happen. Yeah. But, so would these. But what are the so what are the deleterious effects? Just that, that we just be we just we be incurring more costs to the tune of to the tune of of. of talking about here nine twenty thousand dollars difference is that basically if with 32 peers if we don't increase it work the district will be carrying twenty thousand dollars more than it than it would with the increase correct no if we if we did not increase if we did not increase um tuitions the difference would go from 116 um that the, the district is covering to 179 is what we would be covering. Well, I'm talking 32 peers between the 2800 and the 3200 figure. Oh, I see what you're saying. $20,000 basically. Yes. Um, so it's definitely not a big chip out of um, what, we're, what we're charging or, or what we're absorbing in the school budget, um, but it definitely helps. Just to be clear, I, I what's just, the recommendation for the charge? The fee. 32. 32. 32. So I'm, I'm torn a little bit about this, but I, 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 because, you know, I, I just feel like anytime it raises me, but however, to Ms. St. Anna's point, this will allow what 16 other families or 16 other children anyway, to realize a vast savings Correct. in, in childcare and between these right. in, in town objects and not. perhaps even more robust and even more robust uh, academic experience, you know, not to besmirch, you know, the reputation or, or, or accomplishments of any other private preschool. I'm not targeting anything. I'm just saying I, I'm pretty proud of our pre-K program. I think it is pretty awesome. It's pretty remarkable. So I guess if you view it like that, 
um, uncomfortable with it. So thanks. I made up my mind. Um, from my perspective, uh, I I never like to increase fees. I share with Mr. Kearney's view that you know we want to do as much as we can for free. Unfortunately, things cost money, and from what I've learned in my seat at this school committee, um, we need to be very responsible with our with our budget. We have been very responsible with this plan. It's gone through a very responsible subcommittee process. It's gone through a very diligent administration review. We presented it twice. We've heard no comments, concerns from the community. That is telling to me. So um, that suggests that uh, you know this is not going to have a significant impact if we can include our, our pre K. So uh, with that, uh, I will see that we have a motion to approve the increase as recommended by the administration and the subcommittee for uh, tuition from twenty hundred to thirty two hundred thirty two hundred dollars. I'd like to make that motion. Motion made by Mr. Carr. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, motion to second on Ms. St. Ange. Um, we we'll go around the room. Uh, Mr. Kearney. Uh, yeah, uh, aye. Mr. Carr. Aye. Ms. St. Ange. Aye. Mr. McCall. Aye. Mr. Dial. Aye. Uh, unanimous it passes. Uh, Ms. Owen, uh, Dr. Sullivan, please implement the uh, increase in preschool tuition and uh, keep our budget on the straight and narrow Thank as you. much as we can. Thank you very much. Thank you for the, Thank you to the subcommittee for the work on that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, the hope is in collaboration with Mrs. Rocker that um, hopefully maybe the following year we might start um, transitioning into um, committee full day into the school. Uh, which year is going to go through the roof? Be great. Well, the, the, tra the, the transition alone absolutely is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's a huge deal. It's nice it's kindergarten, it's kindergarten, it's kindergarten. It's around, around, right? Yeah. And well, and we're going to do that jump start program again, but eventually, you know, great. you're going to have a lot of kids very, very uh, tuned into in progress. And also, Mr. Kennedy, there are 17 states that have universal pre yeah, not just Florida, not just Florida. I know. Oh, I have a big weather. I'm a big fan. We should, we should, as a state, but I'm just, you know, just pulling a little breath there. That's nice. Okay, so before we 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 do have a lot to cover as we're going forward, so I want to move on the agenda. Um, so these are some of our more routine agenda items. I don't know if we have specific items to cover, but I do want to make sure for the committee and and the community that we don't lose focus of all the functions of our going to public schools. So, um. Mr. Um, Ms. Owen or Dr. Sullivan, anything on food service? So there's a lot of pictures. We saw, um, yep. we saw the, the joint meals. Um, coming in, which was great. Um, yeah, you know, they're doing a lot more scratch cooking and learning to use ingredients. We Have you hired the, I'm um, oh, sorry, get back. Jump in a gun. Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> we, 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 did, we did post um, sorry. and we interviewed today and offered the candidate the position and she accepted for the assistant director of food service slash corporate specialist. But what's her name? It's uh, um it's Kim Urban. Kim Urban. Um, so she'll start. I mean, she's here with us now, but she will start in her new role April first. Um, she's already started in her yeah. new role. Um, behind the scenes, she had a whole notebook full of ideas and um, new recipes. That's got to be and, huge. She, she's she's a. It's, an, it's gonna, and she started um, actually sending specials. Down to the elementary levels to, to try try things out. So um, she'd be great. She started to transition it. So yeah, it's gonna be a great a great add. That's, it's a win win. That's a career advancement opportunity for mm -hmm. Serbian. She's really excited about it. She's great energy, clear energy. passion. Mm -hmm. And then it's a complete win for the district because I think we're we're going to be able to uh, offer more robust food service program through her. Great work. Yeah. So um, that's probably it for food service for now. I mean. Been a lot of growth in that area. It's been it's been a tremendous success story for this administration. So thank you very much for all the work that you've done. Um, and uh, I do want to send a, a um, special thank you from the PSO, both of whom I have a special contact, uh, concerning the um, to to our director of food services concerning the uh, support that they've been given on uh, food and concessions for the basketball game. So that's very exciting. Wonderful. Uh, Marilyn has been a delight to work with. And, uh, that both to the administration here and the community. So, Thank you for so that. that's all in house. It's, it's all in house. So, awesome. so, everyone who's coming to the basketball showdown has the opportunity to, to sample the food that we've been uh, talking about all year long. So, and that's to taste great. some of the progress. Really nice. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Yes. 
Um, so next uh, is our uh, transportation update. This is mercifully a less contentious update than it has been in the prior parts of the year. Um, I'm not even going to say that it's been pretty. I'm not going to. Okay, zip over there. So. Uh, <laughs> it's been um, much okay. smoother in the last few weeks. We'll say um, the only the only one issue that we're still trying to work out um, is the GPS for the two first two buses. Um, it, they they believe it can be done. It's just a little more complicated to get their software person to work with our software to try to get it to work. Um, I have not heard any complaints from parents on those buses. I think they just have to be that they're getting picked up on time. I hear them. I mean, uh, parent, knowing a parent yes. from the students on the buses, I, I hear complaints okay. on a regular basis. So we are, work, we're working <laughs> on it. Um, is that you, Lynn? Uh, no. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah. no, it's not. I hear the complaint. Not, okay. Uh, not, okay. Not just, just, Is there hope that that could be figured out by the end of this school year? Yes. Yes. So, um, um, I can't we, say by the end of the week. Um, it's been, you know, I just set my bar pretty It's well. kind of like it's it's software. Cool here. You know, the two software people, two different software, um, what they're using, what we use, we need to talk to figure out how to make it work. Yeah, um, they do believe it's doable. Let's get that conversation on yeah. the books. You, you saw in action we have um, contingency plans now for if we have one driver out or two drivers out, right? Um, and now we that should be seen. Let's, um, it's just a you, know, you go to your original like, uh, bus stop, but there's two out, mm -hmm. and then there's three out that could be more problems, but that's that's going to happen rarely. And we're still, you know, recruiting and advertising for both parties. Yeah. So I believe well. we're um, in the process. The best, we've, we've, the, the best we've been outfitted since pre COVID. So thank you for all your work on, on transportation. That I think is another area where we've, where we've really grown in the past year. Um, Ms. McCullen I, and, uh, and Mr. Kearney, members of our school facilities committee, report. Um, can, can I accept for a second? We do have a question from oh, the we have a question public. From the public. With it, on that subject. And this is from um, Megan Berry from 11 Cad Lane. And um, Ms. Berry asks Will parents of the contracted buses, so for student buses, be notified when the app is up and running? Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. The answer is as uh, yes. As Thank soon you. as it's in, we will notify. Except for Miss Barry. I'm <laughs> kidding. No, we will definitely. She's a loyal participant. She's a loyal participant. And a good she friend. Uh, that was so. me. That was a joke from Mr. Dial. <laughs> Let the record show. <laughs> you can find him at the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> in a white. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a real election coming up in May 2022. <laughs> That's why I said that. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, anything from the um, uh, school facilities committee? Um, the school facilities committee has been um, has been really uh, quite uh, present in the select board meetings recently mm -hmm. in an effort to try and advocate for money for uh, special purpose stabilization funds, which would address ongoing our, our repair and maintenance issues, um, as well as the feasibility study issue, which would help gather information uh, for Bohassa's community relative to what solutions might be available for um, the middle high school. Um, it's, there's, it's a complex topic because we're not the only, um, we're not the only People see that that table, a lot of departments in town, um, their physical plan is coming to a head. And I think that the select board recognizes this. So it's been part of a larger discussion. I guess there may be, um, there may be a continuation of the feasibility study discussion at a special, uh, relative to a special town meeting coming that, that the select board may uh, opt to hold a special election in the fall early, earlier on than, than normal. Um, so there's no real answer as to whether or not the feasibility study issue will go on the warrant for town, town meeting, but it, it doesn't doesn't look like it's going to for this time. It does appear that the special purpose stabilization fund will be on the town warrant. Um, there are some emergency expenditures that we would like to simultaneously approve. We're trying to figure out if that is allowable um, by law to do that. So you have to establish the special purpose stabilization fund at town meeting. Then you also have to then go back and request specific expenditures from that fund at town meeting, whether or not you can do 
both those things, establish it and request specific expenditure at the same time meeting remains to be seen. Uh, I don't have a clear answer on that. It looks like the answer may be yes. So we'll see. I don't know that I, I, I missed the last meeting last night, um, but Jason Earls, the chairperson of the school facilities committee was there and it doesn't appear after speaking with him that we, we have a consensus on that issue yet. And I know that a few members of the select board, um, especially uh, Ms. Healy Dippold, uh, have been um, active collaborators with the uh, schools on this and, and we're trying to fashion a solution that will work best for our community and we'll keep it posted. And uh, we've not, I don't believe, formally presented anything on the special stabilization fund that was approved at the select meeting two weeks ago. Um, I will propose that we put that as an agenda item yes. for our next meeting. So yes. we can go over that so people in the community know what's going on and, and why it's important. And that would go into uh, flow into an agenda item Mr. Carr will undoubtedly propose, which is our town meeting strategy. I also that's perfect. And that's actually next on the line on my list, which today we see. Yeah. So, okay. More to come on those things, but suffice it to say, from a committee perspective and a town perspective, uh, we, are, we are in this regard getting some great response from our, uh, from our select board, and I think they're giving us some tools to help out uh, across some significant capital uh, needs that the school may have. So, uh, more to come on that. Um, so that will move on to community relations. Any reports from our school committee subcommittees and our liaisons? Uh, I'll start with uh, Mr. Kearney. Yes, um, his student council yesterday. Yep. Uh, very informative student survey to the parents. Uh, relatively positive. School uh, school council. School yes, council. yes. It's, it's student council. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I do student. I say that. That's Was funny. it high school school council? Yes. Okay, yeah. it's framing. There's a lot of mm -hmm. getting the right. Council? Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, yeah we, met, we met yesterday and it was great. Um, a lot of things brought up, um, especially relative to the website not being navigatable. Mm -hmm. um, some that we brought up earlier. Also, too, is like they, they feel like the, the emails are the newsletters. We'd like to see more specific on the emails. Mm -hmm. uh, like sometimes there's so many things on the newsletters that it gets buried mm -hmm. and the kids feel like they're not getting the individual emails. So like mm -hmm. that. That's good. Yeah. Um, they, uh, they also talked about the parents being more participating in the uh, PSO and how they could get involved in that and having a uh, significant other that handles a lot of that she could use the help too. Um, especially in the high school level. So if anybody's interested in the PSL from the high school level, feel free to reach out to Tracy. Um, Tracy Kearney, so if you'd like to help. Um, yeah. So I think that, that, that those are a couple of things that they brought up um, that were, were pretty reasonable. Um, trying to think of what else. But most of it, most of it was really positive. Um, but they would like to see more parent participation. And you know, I, I I would like to see more parent participation. So I was thinking about and Lydia, you've been great on trying to get people in. We always kid about the signs, you know, trying to get get that sign up there, get people in. So I was wondering um, if we could all, all of us community members, make a commitment to bring three parents to the next school meeting. So we reach out to three people. If you reach out to three, you reach out to three, and you reach out, we'll have 15 people. And I think that's a stop. Like, I, it just, it's like, I've been seeing this my whole life in, in this community, nobody here. And to be quite honest with you, we've all put in so many hours to this. And I, I, I feel like I heard myself talk too much. I, I really wanna hear from 15 community members on what they think, right? And so I would, I would ask if, if we could all ask three people and make that commitment. To try to get three people in the next meeting. I'll do it. I do want to point out that people are watching, and because we have a hybrid model, people are tuning in on Facebook and, and on Zoom, and we have people who actively participate on Zoom and who are listening and staying abreast of what we're talking about. So I don't want to kind of make them feel like we're not appreciating that okay. because it's a big deal to carve time out of your this time of day as parents is one of the most challenging. I don't know if there's a not challenging time of day as a parent, but this time of day is a tough one. So it's correct. 
Oh. We do. I've been doing it for five years. Yes. I, I'm asking for one night. You know, and, and I don't have a problem asking three of my friends, or people that I know that I know care about their kids' education, to try to make it to the school. So, Mr. Chair, I find your I, I, I find your idea very intriguing, especially the part where you talk about wanting to hear other voices. And as I think about that, and also think about Ms. Anna's point that we do have a lot of people who listen in to our meetings. I think about um, maybe it's it's a situation where we actually have a special meeting, much like we did before with special mm -hmm. education, a forum. This is not an agenda. You know, to be honest, I think there's many people who would rather skip out on. Um, actually, there's nothing here you want to skip out on, but they might have a view that you might want to skip out on some of these agenda items. Um, but if we create a if we create a special meeting that is by for and about parents' feedback, and for that meeting. We each commit to bring three people who not only commit to come, but also commit to even just share a story. Right. I think that is a that, that may be something that helps us foster a little bit more of that parent involvement. It's worth, it's worth thinking about. And perhaps send out a survey to the community to see what they would like it to be about. Yes. Because so let's, we know what we want to talk about. It's on the agenda. Let's, 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 let's plant that idea. It's great to see an idea. We'll, we'll, we'll see where that grows. I do want to reiterate Mrs. Mrs. St. Orange's point. Mr. Kearney, because I, I really value your input, but I just want to be clear. When 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 you and I started out down the basement in that terrible room that we used to be in, freezing, there was never anyone there, right? Unless there was some really controversial issue there, there and then people would show up. But it has changed because now that we have this, there are I would I would estimate at least at least you know twenty five to forty people that watch on Facebook. Um, and that's a lot more than ever watched these meetings. So I do think that participation um, and visibility is much higher than it has been in the past. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. I think that that's something we brought to the table. So I just want to highlight that. But I, 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 one for three. Yeah, I do have one comment on yes. that too. That is, well, when I first got on, there was the newspaper was there every day, writing every yeah. event, Cape Cod, no, Cohasset Mariner <laughs> is gone. So. That, that to me was a big, and to be honest too, we're not on, we're not on, uh, we're not on cable television. Yeah, we are. That's how my kids and husband watch me. Yeah, how come I can't get it? Because you're, you're here. <laughs> no, yeah, <go> <laughs> my wife's been trying to get it. I get a lot of feedback about that from my you're family. Done. Okay, what channel do we? I don't know. I Depends on your provider. Yeah. So, but it's on. So, they are there. Uh, but I do, okay. want to keep this, I do want to keep this rolling. Um, but your community engagement is, is key important. Any other reports from? I have a quick question, and I feel that it falls under the community relations category. Um, at the rec fair on Sunday, which was very well done, um, I was talking to a few um, parents, community members who are working on the Beachwood Playground initiative, which has the possibility of getting CPC funds, and they were just we were just talking about it. And I feel like that is our population, right? Like it's current and incoming school community members. And I just didn't know they were saying they were trying to get like community visitable community support to kind of give confidence in those that funding. I don't know if there's something that we could do, like a vote of confidence or a letter of support, or if it's not appropriate. I'm just wondering if we could help because I feel like to have kids in all parts of town have access to safe developmentally appropriate playgrounds right. is an important thing and they're working on it and they have designs and it just sounds like you know every up until the vote has happened you don't know what's going to happen just to know if so there's a vote coming up for that well this, cpc funding CPC. so the town meeting that would be on their docket right mm -hmm. there's usually like a big cpc so just didn't know if there's any way that we yeah, could so give a little Let's take that offline. I think, I think sure. one idea is actually have them come and use this forum to talk about that because cool. this is about our kids and yep. our kids are our, our, our community. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. having that. And then we have in the past given votes of comments, shows us yep. mutual support to the things. And it wouldn't be the first time that we've um, involved in things that are not necessarily strictly school. Yep. Uh, so, I think that's I think that's a useful So, let's, let's have Great. this. Great. We can talk about it afterwards. Yep. Just want to introduce the idea. Great. Um, I'm going to close off community relations um, there. I thought there was going to be topics not reasonably anticipated by me, but they are actually on the agenda. So they were reasonably anticipated. <laughs> so we're going to, uh, we're going to check that one off. 
Uh, I don't believe we have any minutes to approve for this meeting. Um, uh, future agenda items, we did discuss town meeting strategy. Uh, we will put that on there. We, we mentioned one other one. Literacy update. Literacy yeah. update. Um, and that's, that, that's what we did. We mentioned one other one that, um, before we get, I thought we just actually floated an idea. The Beachwood Playground? Beachwood Playground. No, I know that one. That, that one we'll, we'll, we'll You're talking about the parent form. Parent form. Let's uh, let's let's think about. Uh, if we could do that before um, the budget comes out too, because then they they could have some kind of input on that vote. Okay. Uh, okay. Mr. Mr. Why it's important. Yeah. What's on there, Mr. Chairman? I'd like just a. It, it's not going to be a, a long idea, but it just I want um, uh security review or security update on the next agenda to make sure that like I I, I want to have that executive session between the site board and the school so I want to be able to report that took place. Yep. Yeah I know and you know I, I would want to reiterate that because you know um I appreciate your thoughts and great comments earlier and you know and you often hear what I've been hearing for some politicians and they they sound like they're from Tennessee and all of them kept just saying this isn't the time to talk about it. this isn't the time to talk about it seems like that's a delay tactic. Like, let's just wait and then people will forget about it. So, I, I just want you, I, I want you to know that I share your proactivity with this because it's it's definitely important and I appreciate your passion. Um, <laughs> stabilization fund update. That was the that, that was, was it. that was the thing. Thank you. Um, well, I had I actually had town meeting strategy stabilization. Yep. So, and then I and 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 Vice Chairman, I want to thank you on the security update. I think security. I think security is going to be a, a very frequent recurring agenda item uh, for this committee in the coming weeks and months. So, um, but I, I'm saying I want it on the next agenda so that we're able to report that, that happened because I, I want to keep us honest. Yeah, we need to we need to coordinate with with select board. So, um, agreed. Okay. Um, with that, we do have uh, reasons to move into executive session. Um, the reason is number three, strategy anticipated collective bargaining and litigation. And then also number four, discuss the deployment of security personnel, our device or strategies. Uh, what we are going to do is what we've done in the past, since this is the last agenda item, uh, I'd ask the motion uh, to go into executive session. Uh, also include the fact that we will, uh, the meeting will end at the end of executive session. So it'll be a double motion. So we won't come back into general session after the executive session. Uh, that way they'll be for people at home to um to to tune into um and so with that i would propose a roll call one other um before we get the roll call vote on executive session i would like to propose a five minute recess in between the um that vote and the start of executive session uh just to uh to, to get some things in order if that's okay um so i have a motion to that effect. i'll make a motion uh to uh Take a five minute recess, then enter into executive session, then adjourn the executive session and a meeting at the end of at the conclusion of executive session. For reasons number three and four. Yes. Yes. Second. Uh, okay. Second. I'm going to Mr. Carr. I'll roll call vote. Mr. Kearney. Aye. Mr. Carr. Aye. Ms. St. Ange. Aye. Mr. Collin. Aye. Mr. Dial. Aye. Uh, that's uh, motion is passed. We will move into a five minute recess, re adjourn uh, in executive session. Uh, for reasons three and four. Uh, for those of you at home, thank you very much for uh, tuning in, and um, we will see you next time.